Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the leak code question unique binary search tree 2. Alright, so in this question we're going to be given an integer n where the goal is to return all structurally unique binary search trees which has exactly n nodes of unique values from 1 to n. And the goal is to return any of uh, the answers in any order. All right, so real quickly, what is a binary search tree? So a binary search tree is a tree-based data structure, and the way it works is given a tree, any of its nodes, all the elements to the right of it, right, its right subtree, is going to be greater than the value of the root itself. And all the uh, values in the left subtree are going to be smaller than the root itself. So a quick example, when the root is 2, everything to the left of 2 has to be less than 2. So in this case, that's the number 1. And everything to the right of 2 has to be greater than 2, which is 3. So another quick example is 1. So to the right of 1, we have 3, which is correct, since 3 is greater than 1. And to the left of two, uh, 3, we have 2, since, well, 2 is less than 3. Okay. So that's how a binary search tree works. Now, as you can see, in this case, n is equal to 3. So you can kind of think that the elements that we need to account for are the numbers 1, 2, and 3. Those are the range of numbers that we need to account for in a binary search tree. Now, to find all of the possibilities, this is where it might get a little bit confusing. And let me just show you a very simple way to actually do this. So let's go on with the same example, n is equal to 3. And like I said, n is equal to 3 is just going to be the numbers 1, 2, 3. Let's just write that down exclusively. Now, at this point, uh, you can kind of think of it as a backtracking solution. At least that's what I thought of it. And let me just show you what I mean by that. So in the beginning, what are the options that I have for a root? So in, uh, for a root, I could actually have any value. It could be 1, it could be 2, or it could be 3. Right? Any of the three values can be a possible root. Now remember, we just need to get all of the possible binary search trees. Now, just to kind of add on to it, if we wanted a structurally balanced binary search tree, then we would take the middle value as the root. When we do that, we get a pretty structured uh, binary search tree. But in this case, we just want all of them. So the possible roots are 1, 2, and 3. So let's start off with taking 1 as the possible root. So we're going to take 1. And now what do we do? So at 1, so this is a simple trick. When We know that these numbers, 1, 2, 3, right? Or whatever n is. So 1 to n is going to be in ascending order. So since that we know it's sorted in ascending order, we can use a simple trick, which is, so let's say we take 1 over here. And what we're going to basically do is that everything to the left of 1 is going to be in the left subtree and everything to the right of one is going to be on the right subtree and the reason for that is because everything to the left is going to be less than one since it is sorted and everything to the right is going to be well greater than one so in this case there's nothing to the left of one so that's just going to be none so i'm just going to leave it as it is now to the right of one we have two options so in the beginning we had three options one two and three and now the options are two and three so at this point Let's say we pick 2. So let me just write that. So let's say we pick 2. Now at this point, the only value that's left is, well, 3. And 3 is going to be to the right of 2. So let's just go back to the same spot. So over here, we had two options, 2 or 3. And we chose 2. But now let's choose 3. So at this point, we're going to choose 3. And, well, the remaining value is 2. So this is kind of how I look at it. So it's kind of like a backtracking solution. So over here, the two options were 2 or 3. And when we chose 2, the remaining option was 3, and then we were done. And then we went back one step, since at this point, we got all of the options, since there was only one option of 3. So we go back one step and look at the other option, which is 3. So we account for the 3 here, and the remaining value is 2. So at this point, we're done with 2, which is the only possible option. So we go back one step. Now over here, the two options were 2 and 3 and we've accounted for both of them. So now we're gonna go back another step. So we backtrack again to the root in this place. So basically what we're saying when we do that, we've got all of the possible binary search trees for the number one. So cool, so now we're done with everything for one. So now we're gonna try out the value two. So at two, we do the same thing like I showed you. Uh, we go to 2, and everything to the left of it is going to be in the left subtree. Everything to the right of it is going to be in the right subtree. But in this case, well, there's just two values, 1 and 3. So we can just directly put it. So 1 goes over here, and 3 goes over here. That's it. So we're done. 
That's all of them. And um, just to actually further iterate that, <clears throat> sorry. So at the left of uh, two, we only have one option, which is one. And to the right of two, we only have one option, which, which is three. There's no other possible option. So we backtrack from both of them and we go back to the root since there's no other options on the left and the right. So we're done with all of the possible values for two as well. And now we try the final root, which is three. So at three, uh, we do the same thing. There's nothing to the right of three, but we have values to the left of three. And it's similar to one. So the two options are one and two. Cool. And so let's say we pick one first. The remaining value is two, which goes on the right of one, since two is greater than one. But now we've got all the options at this point. So we backtrack one step and see the other possibility, which is two. So we could have three and then two goes over here. And the f last and final value that we need to account for is one. So where is one going to be? Well, one is going to be to the left of two. So that's about it. These are all of our possible binary search trees with the numbers one, two, and three. And how do we know that we've reached an end? Well, it's because we've uh, covered all of the possibilities for all the possible roots, which are one, two, and three. So this is exactly how we're gonna solve our solution, sorry, our, our question. And just to uh, further iterate, um, just uh, let me just show you something with n is equal to four real quickly. Um, but the idea is the same backtracking uh, idea. So let's say we take three as the root, right? So the values to the left can either be one or two. And the values to the right, well, there's only one option, which is four. So on the left, first we try one, and then we look at uh, all, its, it, all of its possible values. Then once we're done with all of one's possible values at that point, we look at two. And let's say uh, this goes up to five, right? For example, just for the sake of it. Over here, the options would be four and five. So at this point, we would first look at all the possible options with uh, one and four. Then we would look at all the possible options with one and five. Then we might look at all the possible options with two and five, and then two and four. Uh, probably not in not that order, but my point is we're looking at all of the possible options and we're gonna add that to some sort of list which stores this all. Now the question is, how exactly are we going to do this? And essentially like uh, how I showed you, we're gonna, we can break it down into smaller parts. So uh, in this case, right, so when you had three, um, actually let's just use this binary search tree. So let's say you had this, instead of trying to build it from up top, we can divide it into smaller uh, subtrees. So we can go all the way down. Now, the first thing we can do is we're gonna have that none. Then we're gonna have two pointing to none on both sides, right? So that's what we have. Then we're gonna have one pointing to this subtree on the right. Then we're gonna go to three pointing to this entire subtree on the left, right? So we're gonna kind of break it down and go step by step. So one way we can do that, we're gonna do that recursively using, let's say, a helper function, right? And this helper function is going to take two values. Now, what are the two values we want to give it? So let's say we're taking three as the root, okay? So what I really want to do at a certain point is I want to go to this helper function and I want it to return a tree given a start and end value. So in the beginning, our end value is three, right? Uh, sorry, in this case, it's going to be five, right? So our range is going to be one comma five for example, right? But obviously that's not the case, but in this case, we're taking three as the root, okay? So in this case, for everything on the left, our helper function, we're gonna call the start comma end value, or we could just call it first comma last, where the first value in this case is going to be one, and the second value is going to be two. So we're saying that whatever is on the left of three are going to, the possibilities at this point are from the range of one comma two inclusive of one and two. And at this point, we're gonna build everything with respect to that. Okay, so now we actually need to further simplify. So let's say, uh, now these are the two possibilities, right? Now we can go further down into it. And in this case, our possibilities would be one and one. So the start value would be one comma one. So essentially what this is saying is at, at the top, we pick the root three. Now we're gonna pick the root as two. And how am I picking two? Well. I'm just going back one step. So we had three, so three minus one is two. So now I'm just gonna assume that at this point, the root is two. So now the root is two and I have one comma one. So essentially what that tells me is the start value is one and the end value is one. So there's only one possible value I can have, which is one. So I have one at this point. 
Okay, so this is how it's going to work. All right, and then each time we're kind of uh, returning, what we're going to be returning is the tree that we've formed at that point. Okay, and uh, whatever the tree we return, we're going to add to the left or to the right of a certain node. So now at this point at 1 comma 1, what is the node, uh, the root that we've assumed? The root at this case is 1. So we go back one more step, right? So from three, we went to two, from two to one. So we go back another step. And now it's going to be one comma zero. So start value is one and the end value is zero. And that makes no sense, right? How can the start value be greater than the end value? So at this point, this is kind of an edge case that we need to deal with. And essentially what this is saying is to the left of one, we have the value none. And, and same to the right, right? We have the value none. So this is exactly what it's denoting. When the start is greater than the end, that means that we need to have we have a leaf node or a node with a value of none. Okay, so that's one thing that we gotta look for. Okay, cool. So this is kind of how we're gonna build it up. So at, it, at this point, we had one comma two, right? And we might actually have something like one comma one, saying that one is the root at this case. So essentially, we're taking some values of root and we're dividing it into a smaller tree at each time. Now, one more thing, just to be clear, at the when we go to the right, at this point, right, uh, we can assume four as the root. So instead of one comma two, our range is now gonna be four comma five. Okay, so this is how it's gonna work. And at each time we're returning some uh, tree value, and we're gonna take that value, and we're gonna use the previous node, which points to the left or the right of that. So I think it'll be a lot easier to explain while I'm writing the code, so let's do that now. All right, so we're gonna start off by actually uh, declaring our uh, helper function, so let's define that. And like I said, we're gonna give it two values, right? A first and a last value. So let's just do that, first, comma, last. Now, what exactly are we doing here? We're gonna be creating the trees. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a list for storing all of the trees that we create, okay? So now at this point, what is the first thing we gotta do? Well, we need to get all of the roots. So how do we do this? So the way we do that uh, is at any point, Right, so when we have the value over here, the two possibilities are one and two. So, uh, and that's what we get, right? One comma two. So what we're gonna do, if the possible values are, well, one and two. So we do for root in one comma two. That's exactly what we're gonna do. Those are the possible roots, okay? So let's get that. So for root in range, and the range in this case is going to be the first value, that's uh, going to be the first thing, and the last value. But in this case, we gotta include the last value as well. So when we're giving one comma two as our input, two is inclusive, all right? So that's what I mean. And the way we do that is, well, we can, we can just add the number one to it. So last plus one. Okay, cool. So now we have all of the values of the possible roots. Now the next thing that we gotta do is we gotta get everything for the left stuff. So everything on the left subtree. So what is this going to be? And the way we get this, is by calling this helper function, okay? And uh, as I write it out, it, it'll make more sense. So helper, and the first value in this is gonna be first, and why is it first? Well, because like I said, everything to the left of it is in the left subtree. So the first value is always going to be first, and when we go to the right, right, for the values on the right of it, the last value is going to be the last value, which in this case is five, for example, okay? So the first value is gonna be first, and the last value is going to be whatever we're currently on. So whatever root we're currently on, but minus one. So root minus one. And what's the reason for that? So let's say we're taking two as the root, then our range is just gonna, well, we just have the number one. Okay, so let's say three in this case, the root. Well, then it's gonna be three minus one. Okay, telling us that that could be on the left subtree, okay? So that's everything for the left. And now for the right subtree, it's gonna be the same logic, except we look at the right-hand side, okay? So the starting point over here is gonna be root plus one. So when we take three as the root, uh, the, everything to the right starts off at four, and it ends at the last value, which is always going to be five, okay? So root plus one, and the last value is going to be, well, the last value, okay? So now we have three for loops, one for the root, one for the left, and one for right. So now at this point, what we need to do is we gotta create a node, and we're just gonna use this constructor that we have over here, okay? So tree node, and the value at this point is gonna be that of the root, okay? And now, we gotta point it to the left and a right subtree. So the left subtree over here, sorry, so node, dot left so to the left subtree we're gonna have whatever we form at left 
okay and this likewise we do the same for the right subtree so it's gonna be whatever we get at right okay so no dot right is equal to right now at this point what we gotta do is we gotta append this node to our tree that we're forming over here okay so sorry I spelled that wrong so let's just say trees there's gonna be trees as well and to that we're gonna append this node okay and basically what we're doing at this point is that this is one of the possible combinations that we have okay and this is what we're actually going to end up returning we're going to return the list of trees that we have over here okay so just to actually further explain this let's say at the beginning for left in helper right what essentially we're getting is we're getting a set of possible trees that could be in the left of a certain root so when i give the root as three right to the left of it i have a few possibilities like i showed you right i could either have one or two and based on that it's going to branch out so at that point this is going to be a list of those possible values through which i'm going to iterate through and add that to my node over here okay the same way over here for right i'm going to have a possible values for subtrees that are formed on the right of a given node and that's what I'm going to iterate through and add to my node, okay? And now, now we've got to call this function, okay? So what exactly do we want to return? And the value that we really want for, uh, want from is from 1 all the way to the value n. So our first value is going to be 1 and the last value is going to be n. So now that's what we're going to do. We're going to call our helper function and we're going to give, sorry, we're going to give 1 comma n okay so hopefully you're understanding this uh, essentially at this point we're returning the value trees and at the ending so for one comma n we're going to get all of the possible binary search trees at this point but when you actually break it down into smaller parts this trees is uh, the trees that gets returned is only returning a smaller subset so let's say we're just getting everything to the left of one for example and then we iterate through those possibilities and we're going to construct our tree based upon that okay so we're calling this helper function one comma n and this is well the value that we're going to we're going to return whatever this returns okay so finally there's actually one small thing that i did not account for yet but i did explain it so remember how i told you that when we reach an end point over here right when we have a none we're going to have something like one comma zero for example where the start value is less than the end value now again when the start and the end value are the same that's okay that's telling us that just one possibility at that point but when the start value is greater than the end value what that means is that well there's uh there is nothing that exists at that point it's none so that's something that's an edge case that we do need to look for and we're going to do that over here and uh, actually let's do this about this so over here and at this point we're going to check if the first value is uh, greater than the last value then that means we're going to return a none so we're going to return sorry return none okay and it's going to be a list of none and essentially what this is really saying is uh, remember at each point we're returning a value so let's say we go to one and we pass one as the root right then we're going to give one comma zero to our helper function and what that tells us for example is to the left of one we don't have any possible values to the left of one the only possible value is none so when we're iterating through it in our for loop over here well we're going to iterate through the none over here and that's what's going to get appended to the node at this point okay so this is why this is very important okay cool so that should be it and if you submit this it should get accepted so that should be it for this video and do let me know if you have any questions so thank you